everyone and welcome to today's WordStream webinar. Just in, Google releases new advertising features um, featuring the one and only Erin Sagan. My name is Callie and I'm just here to get things started before I pass it over to our webinar queen Erin. Um, so let's start by getting some of the logistics out of the way. Following our presentation, you'll receive an email with today's recording and slides. So if you miss anything, don't stress out about it. You'll have access to all of that information later on this afternoon when you receive an email. We also have um, a couple minutes for Q&A following the presentation, so don't be shy. Definitely submit your questions throughout the webinar, and we will get to as many as possible. If we don't get to yours, we will um, give you Erin's information so you can reach out to her. For those of you who are not familiar with WordStream, uh, we are a search marketing software provider with free and paid tools to help you easily grow your AdWords, Bing, and Facebook campaigns. So if you're looking to master paid search or really learn anything about any digital marketing related topics, definitely check out our website at wordstream.com slash learn. We have a great PPC university that's um, a great resource for everyone. Now you can meet Erin Sagan. Uh, she's our PPC evangelist here at Wordstream. She's specialized in paid search for over five years now. Um, she's been with Wordstream for ever it seems, um, and she was recently named the fourth most influential PPC expert of 2016, so big congrats to her on that. And definitely follow her on Twitter at Erin Sagan. Uh, you can also follow at WordStream and use the hashtag PPC News to uh, follow along during this webinar. Now I'm going to pass it off to Erin herself and she'll get started. All right, perfect. Uh, thanks for the introduction, Callie. Much appreciated. Um, and just to follow up on that, like Holly said, my Twitter handle is at Erin Sagan. If y'all have questions afterwards or anything else that you want us to focus on, don't hesitate to reach out. Um, I'm like overactive on Twitter, so I will definitely respond to you um, and it will be noted. We also have the lovely Mary Lister um, on our Twitter handle today. So if you guys want to live tweet this, we'll be live tweeting it. Send in your questions, anything else that uh, you want to chat about. And just be sure to use the hashtag PPC News. All right, so getting started, I don't know if you guys remember a few months back, it wasn't too long ago, um, Google had their big performance summit. And it was this big to-do we sent. Um, we had a huge webinar. It was such a big deal because Google announced all of the big things that they're releasing in you know the coming months as well as 2017. Um, it was really highly anticipated, really exciting. They told us all this new stuff. We were super excited. Um, and one of the biggest things they shared with us was expanded text ads. Um, so advertisers got excited. We were ready to implement all of these new things. But luckily, Google gave us a little bit of a breather. So they announced these big changes back in Q2 in May. And they told us that the majority of these changes, expanded text ads, device-based bidding, um, the new AdWords uh, interface program, they told us that would all be coming in you know, late Q4, early Q1 of next year. So advertisers said, all right, cool. I'm excited for these new releases. I'm ready for them. I can't wait to implement them in my account. But I've got three months of summer to enjoy myself. And um, I don't know about you guys, but I have definitely been enjoying the summer, kind of sitting back, relaxing, uh, enjoying my hammock time. I've spent far too long in the swimming pool and definitely ate more than my fair share of grilled items, um, which doesn't bode well for the whole swimming pool thing because I'm definitely over enjoying the summer. Um, so we've all kind of been sitting back, enjoying ourselves, and waiting for the fall to really get cracking and focus on paid search and focus on these new changes. But while we were enjoying the summer, um, going swimming and barbecuing, the little elves at Google had some secrets in the works, and they've been working pretty hard this summer. And unexpectedly, on July 26, just a couple of days ago, what happened? There was breaking news. In fact, uh, luckily I had a little bit of a heads up ahead of time because I probably would have had a heart attack on this out on Tuesday. This was huge news. Google announced 
that they had three of those innovations that they had announced at the summit ready to go. So remember, I told you they weren't going to be ready to go until Q4. We all sat back and enjoyed ourselves because we knew we had time to wait. There was nothing we could do, uh, no, no sense in thinking about these things because they weren't going to be available until later in the year. And then Google sprung this on us. You know, out of the blue, they said, hey, everything's ready. It just dropped in the interface. I was like, what's happening? Um, so what does this mean for us? What does this mean for advertisers who thought they had a little bit more time um, to prepare for this, to mentally prepare for the work involved in updating all of their account information? What it means is your summer is over. You have a lot of work to do, and I don't care if you have um, you know, high hopes for the rest of August to spend a lot of time by the swimming pool. If you're going to do things right and if you want to make the most of these changes, it's time to dive in, understand them, begin preparing for them, and actually make adjustments now. So what's new? That's the plan for today's webinar. We're going to walk through um, the top three things that Google just released as well as a, a little bonus item that I'm excited about that I think you guys should definitely be taking advantage of. So first things first, and, and this is definitely by far the biggest and I would say the most exciting thing to come out of it, uh, expanded text ads. So these were ads as we've known them really for the last 16 years. They are pretty straightforward. And I think we've all become these like wordsmiths who have learned to mince our words. Um, you know, a, a text ad was smaller than a tweet. So you really had to be careful with characters. You had to be so, so um, stingy about the words that you were using. I know I spent a lot of time in the thesaurus just looking for alternates to the words I wanted to use that were way shorter because these character counts were teeny tiny. Um, and you guys all know these, you've run these ads for a long time. With expanded text ads, it's kind of like that original ad on steroids. It like totally hulked up and got bigger. And now we have these new expanded text ads. And they are absolutely enormous, significantly bigger than the text ads that we've grown to know. and. I don't know if I can really say love because I don't think anyone enjoyed uh, stressing over the word count in those old ads. But these new ads are pretty exciting. If you look at them, they got five more characters out of the headline. So we went from 25 character headlines to 30 character headlines. And then they tapped on a brand new headline. So you have this secondary alternate headline also of 30 characters. They added um, URL paths to create the display URL. So in the past, we knew that we had to pull in the domain from the uh, final URL and use that as the display URL. And you could manipulate it to a degree. That was the best practice for a long time that a lot of people didn't recognize the importance of and didn't bother doing. But now Google's encouraging you to really take advantage of this. So they're going to pull the domain from your final URL, automatically input it here, and then you can pick two 15-character URL paths to add. And this doesn't have to produce a working URL. All it has to do is resonate with the searcher. So you can plug in two of your top keywords there, perhaps. But really just adding some more words to the URL to indicate to the searcher that it is indeed a very um, targeted landing page that they're going to be heading to. And then last but not least, um, they increased the description size. So in the past, we had two description lines of 35 characters, totaling 70 characters. Now Google has upped that grand total to 80 characters. So they've added 10 characters to the description. So as you can see, the ads produced here are significantly bigger, they're more compelling, and they can share just more with the advertiser about, or share more with the searcher about that particular advertiser. And one of the reasons that Google said that they made this change, which by the way, they've been teeing up for for a while, is because they really want the experience to be consistent across devices. 
So they looked at the most commonly used devices, i.e. the most popular smartphones. They looked at the best way to manipulate the space to take advantage of the space at the top of the SERP on that given device. And so you'll see there's, there's going to be a consistency now here in how your ads are displayed across devices. What you also see, um, I, I don't know if you guys remember, a couple months ago, we all panicked and freaked out because Google completely changed the SERP. They got rid of the right-hand rail ads. They added a fourth ad to the top of the page. And then they moved five through seven to the bottom of the page and totally like got rid of eight and nine all the way to the second page. So they made some really serious adjustments to the SERP. And we all kind of sat there in this panic mode being like, why is the SERP changing? Well, the SERP was changing because ultimately Google knew they were going to come out with these new ads. So step one, make the desktop SERP look just like the mobile SERP, right? Have that streamlined approach. And step two was to um, improve the ad quality by adding more characters and keep it consistent across devices. So this all really boils up into this master plan that Google has to create this uh, streamlined, consistent experience across all devices with mobile being at the forefront. Okay, so we now have these ads that are 47% bigger. I mean, really, which one would you click on? The reality is the big one, right? Um, so advertisers, when this came out, we were pumped about it. We were excited. Um, I know I was like probably more excited than I should be because it's pretty embarrassing to get this excited about work stuff. But this is a really big deal. In fact, some AdWords account reps are saying that this is the biggest thing to happen to the paid search industry in 16 years. So I hope you're pumped. I'm pumped. But along with being pumped, I'm a little bit nervous. Um, and that's because standard ads are going to go extinct. So Google is not just making this change and giving you the ability to show a big ad or a small ad. They're not saying, like, hey, pick the cool thing that you want to do, whatever works well for your business. They're saying, we're introducing this new ad flavor. It's going to be bigger. You can take a couple months to get your feet wet, start switching over your account, get comfortable with these new ads, but come October 26, you will no longer have the ability to create or edit your standard app. So mark that off on your calendar. That's your last day of editing those smaller ads. And then presumably at some point in either late Q4 or early Q1, everything will change because those standard smaller old ads will stop serving. And expanded text ads will become the norm. And as far as we, as we know from what Google has indicated so far, they are saying that if you do not take the time to update your own ads and move to expanded text ads, then when this transition happens, your ads will just stop running if you don't have expanded text ads. So that could effectively turn off your account if you do not have expanded text ads ready to go by this transition date. So if there's one thing that I get across to you guys today, it's get started. Start preparing for this. Start building those expanded text ads. And if you don't, you're really just going to end up building them over the holiday season. <laughs> you really don't want to be hit hard with this big update when you're in the midst of the holiday season, be it because you're busy personally in the holiday season, but also a lot that we're doing as advertisers, tons of reporting, tons of updates, sale updates that we're making during the holiday season. So don't wait, don't hate yourself during the holidays. Um, and another thing to think about is in this small time period where both small ads and big ads will run simultaneously, take advantage of that. This is the time to beat out your competitors because the sooner you switch over, the sooner you'll have these big ads showing, which will likely gain more clicks than your uh, competitors with their teeny tiny ads. So put down the pina, pina colada, cancel your pull time, really start to focus on prepping those ads. And even if you just do it piece by piece, even if you do 
an ad group worth of ads every day, it will be well worth your while. Now, this is a ton of work, and the thing that sucks when you have a ton of work to do and it's this brand new uncharted territory, it's like you could make all these changes and you might later find that you went about it the total wrong way. So luckily, we've had about 130 of our accounts in the beta program for these expanded text ads. And my brilliant colleague, Mark, uh, took the time to review all of the text ads that we are running as ETAs and develop a set of best practices to follow. Um, so this is kind of perfect timing. Before you start writing your ads, get comfortable with these best practices. And I guarantee you there will be more to come. You know, we're still figuring a lot out, and we don't want to jump to conclusions. Um, but these are kind of the definite things that we know so far. And don't feel like you have to take notes through all of this. I know it's a lot of information. We have a really beautiful cheat sheet that you can print out, put right beside your computer to help you write your expanded text ads. Um, so we just handed that out through GoToMeeting or GoToWebinar. If you guys look at the handout section in the GoToWebinar platform, you'll see it's called ETA Cheat Sheet. It's a PDF. Um, I'm, I love it. <laughs> I printed it out on my desk because it's so nice to have nearby. It shows you the character counts and then the top seven best practices that we're aware of thus far. So let's go ahead and walk through those best practices. So first things first, write new ads. Um, I think a lot of people were hoping that Google would just give us a button to press that would kind of take our old ad and meld it into a new ad. That's not the direction you want to go. You also don't want to go this direction. And even Google made this mistake when they first released this new ad type. And what you can see is all we did in adding this secondary headline is um, they kind of added a tagline. So it said, Guitar Center Official, the destination for music gear. Um, unfortunately, the destination for music gear doesn't give me any clear value prop. It literally just expanded on the Guitar Center motto. Um, and it doesn't add anything new or, frankly, useful to the ad. This headline has high visibility, so you want to take advantage of it. So don't be a Google. This is bad on Google's part. Don't fall into this trap. Write a brand new ad. Take the time to really create something new and take advantage of these amazing new character counts. Um, and, and we learned this lesson the hard way, too. So when we originally switched our accounts over, for a few accounts, what we did was we literally imported the information from our existing ads, tacked on a quick secondary headline and called it a day. And the results were devastating. It was like we actually got worse click-through rates on the expanded text ads than we got from the, uh, the standard ads. And, and it, that's crazy because we should be getting really good click-through rates on these new ads. We have more space to write compelling content. So we learned very quickly, don't just copy your old ads and tack on a little bit more detail, really take advantage of these. Um, so here's how we're taking advantage of the new space. And this is an example from an existing client of ours. Um, they started with this ad. This was their small ad. And you can see, they stuck with the same headline that was working. But rather than just kind of reiterating their brand terms or anything like that, they added a value prop in that secondary headline. They really, really took advantage of it. Um, and this ad yielded 400% higher click-through rate. So it was well worth that little extra effort. And yes, it is extra effort to write a brand new ad. I understand that. I, I'm saying put down the pina colada because you really need to take the time to do this and do it the right way. I'm not suggesting that it is going to be easy. But you already know your company. You know terminology that has worked well for you. It's not that hard to come up with something new that you know is going to work. Look at what's working in emails. Look at what's working on Facebook. Look at what's working on all these other venues and start pulling from there. That's a really great starting point. That's what we did with Namely. And who would, who would pass up a 400% higher click-through rate? Um, I know I want it, and I know the effort was well worth it. All right, so number two is to include important messaging in your headlines. 
this is where people's eyes are drawn. It's in a different color, it's larger, it's more prominent. And so these headlines, they're kind of your golden area. You really want to take the time to put your most important information in those headlines. Again, not just some crappy added uh, logo type material. What you really want to do is take advantage of the headlines and give them a value prop in there. But that said, headline number one is more important than headline number two. Now, best case scenario, you get an ad that looks like this. You get your first and your second headline all kind of melded together. Here you see they added a the little dash in. But this, this is really best case scenario. This is not always what we're going to see. Um, so sometimes Google will split it up and put your headlines on two separate lines. We know people are more likely to focus on the top line than the second line. So if this is the case, then that really could um, detract interest in that second line, meaning your first headline is what people are reading. Kind of juries out on whether they bother, bother continuing to read the second line. And then, this is kind of worst case scenario, if your headlines are too long, Google may truncate the headline. And you might be thinking, how could they be too long? Because Google is giving me a character count. Um, AdWords actually is looking at your pixel count or your pixel amount in order to determine how much they're showing. So particularly you guys who are using a lot of W's, M's, those characters, you know, uppercase E, those characters that take up more pixels could be pushing your headline out and it could potentially be truncated. Um, my suspicion is that Google is going to fix this. I don't think these will be truncated for long. I think they'll make adjustments or give us clearer guidelines to follow to avoid this. Um, Google's all about user experience. This isn't the best user experience. And that's why I think they're really going to take action here. But they're just rolling it out. They're just getting their feet wet, too. Um, so in the interim, really, you know, just keep an eye on this. You can use the app preview tool in AdWords to see what it's going to look like. And usually that will show an indication of the truncation. Um, I've also read recently that instead of taking advantage of that 35 character, uh, or the 30 character headline to cut a few letters off and aim for something a little bit shorter. Um, again, I hope that doesn't continue. I think we really should be taking advantage of these longer character counts. But if you're really concerned, you don't want that truncation, you want to play it safe, you can go maybe do two 25 character headlines. Um, it's it's going to be a game for a little while figuring out what works. But beware that it may be truncated. Uh, number four, don't pause your old ads right away. Um, it's going to take time for these new ads to garner good performance. It's going to take a little while to get enough performance to know that you really want to encourage people to look at those brand new ads and run them more and maybe allocate more of your info that direction. Um, so don't pause your old ads. For the next couple of months, both your old ads and your new ads can run. Give your new ads a little bit of time to catch, uh, to catch some steam. Figure out what's working or what's not working. You might create an expanded text ad that totally stinks. And that might just be because um, what you've written hasn't resonated with people, whatever it may be. Like you're still going to have to keep testing your ads. There will always be this A-B testing thing going on. And you should always be doing it. Um, but don't pause your old ads right away. Don't move all the way over to ETAs. Slow and steady wins the race. Your goal should be have ETAs for every single ad group that you feel good about by the end of the fall. That would be my best recommendation to you. That's going to get you ready for the end of Q4, beginning of Q1, when Google pulls the plug on all ads and you're with ETAs and only ETAs. Uh, number five, write ads that speak to users on every single device. This is a tricky one. I know we got a couple of emails when we first announced this webinar being like, please talk about this. I don't know what's going on here. It's a little bit scary. Um, so we've gotten very accustomed to creating mobile-specific ad copy, as, as we should, right? It's been a long time um, that Google has allowed us to create mobile-preferred ads. They typically do better, and we encourage people to use them. With this new release, you do not have the ability to create a mobile-preferred ad. 
meaning that every ETA that you create is eligible to appear on a tablet, a desktop, and most importantly, a mobile phone. So if you've gotten accustomed to saying things like using mobile-specific calls to action for your mobile ads, it's going to be a little tricky. You don't necessarily, uh, can't necessarily continue to do that because the same ad could be shown on mobile, desktop, or tablet. So the best workaround that I can give you for right now, and I don't know that this will necessarily be the workaround for all time, because Google could very well release a mobile preferred option in the future. But for the time being, the best way to address this is to create a mobile specific ad group where you enable mobile specific ad copy in terms of ETA. Um, and if you guys have questions, tweet at me or we can talk at the end um, in the QA session of this webinar, but we can go into a little bit more detail on that. All right, number six, this is an easy one. This one's awesome. Um, again, we know that Google is going to dynamically take our final URL and plug in the domain right here in the path. Then they're giving us the opportunity to add two terms, two 15-character terms behind to uh, fill out that path. Now, the reason that I like the way they're doing it here is because in the past, you were stuck with a character count for that entire display URL, meaning if you had a really, really long domain, you couldn't spice it up at all. Well, here, everybody's on the same playing field. So as you can see, we have uh, the ability to create two 15-character paths. My recommendation, put in your top keywords. So identify the two keywords in your ad group that are getting the most visibility and add those in because that's going to show all the people who are searching for those particular terms, again, that you are giving them highly relevant content for them. And then finally, update your extensions. Um, so this is, again, a really, really simple one. Most of us have had ad extensions running for a long time. We don't update our ad extensions regularly because they're kind of like set it and forget it for the most part. Um, you're setting up your call out extensions, your site link extensions, and whatnot. Now that you have more copy available in the ads, just remember, you don't want to repeat yourself in your site link extensions. You don't want to repeat yourself in your call out extensions. So update your extensions to ensure that it's not super redundant. Nobody wants to see super redundant ads. It just would be a waste of those characters. Um, so make sure that your ad copy is different than the copy used in your site links, your call outs, and whatnot. All right, that brings me to change number two. Um, and that's, I, I, I would say the second biggest change, these are probably uh, neck and neck. I think the ETA change is bigger, but this one is also a pretty big deal, which is device-based bid adjustment. So if you guys were in PPC in 2013, you may remember when we switched over to enhanced campaigns, and it was this huge, huge drama because Google took away something that we held near and dear as advertisers. They took away the ability to set separate bids for tablets desktop, and mobile. They did give us the ability to set mobile bit adjustments, but you couldn't totally say, like, I don't want to show up on tablets anymore. And on top of that, you couldn't create these uh, device-specific campaigns. And we fought them on this. I actually remember being at Google, and one of my teammates, it was like the question of the day. He raised his hand, and he was like, when are we going to be able to create tablet-specific campaigns again, and the Google reps just looked horrified because it was something they had heard a million times and they knew it wasn't changing. Um, well, I guess if you complain enough, you got what you want because I literally felt like I was in a time warp when Google announced this, but they're going back to their old way of doing things. They're finally giving us the ability to set adjustments by device. Now, it's not exactly the same as it was before. You can't like opt in, opt out 100%. Instead, you have to use these, a bid, these bid adjustments to uh, manipulate how you are or who you are advertising in particular ad groups. But this is really cool because essentially you can create mobile-specific ad groups. 
And like I was saying earlier, if you if mobile is really important to you and you want to make sure that your ads um, that are written for mobile viewers only show to people <laughs> who are mobile devices, this is an option for you because you can deprioritize people on these two um, devices and really bid up on mobile, vice versa for your other ad groups. Um, so you can definitely take advantage of this. Just beware, um, you don't necessarily want to turn around and do exactly what you were doing in 2013. The landscape has changed. And one of the main reasons Google did do this, um, this change back in 2013 is because they needed to give advertisers the nudge to get on mobile. And enhanced campaigns effectively pushed people to advertise on mobile. And you can see the, the, there's plenty of users out there who want mobile. In fact, we're seeing more searches across mobile than on desktop nowadays. But look at how that shift has changed over time. You know, back in 2013, barely anybody was doing motion, uh, searches on their mobile phones. And look at how different it is nowadays. So if you are one of those people who lamented the switch to enhanced campaigns because you didn't want to use mobile and you wanted to opt out of mobile and enhanced campaigns ruin that for you, don't go back to your pre-enhanced campaigns plan of avoiding mobile altogether unless you're really confident that mobile traffic doesn't work for you. Because as you can see, if you nix mobile altogether, you could be nixing a ton, a ton, a ton of impressions, clicks, and ultimately conversions from your account. So be mindful, don't just dial back, don't fully embrace the time warp. Make sure that you're making smart decisions and you're utilizing these new tools that Google is giving you in a smart way. And along with that, be mindful that CPCs have changed too. Um, CPCs have been growing, no surprise there, right? Ever since the advent of AdWords, we've seen them grow. Um, but this is to be expected. So again, don't jump back to those old bids. Don't, ex don't expect it to be 2013 because it isn't. Instead, look at this as a new tool that you could potentially use to your advantage. And frankly, if the bid adjustments you have working for you right now are working, don't fix it. If it's not broke, don't fix it. The only people who should be diving in and using these device bids are people who genuinely feel ready, know based on their current performance that they need to make some changes. All right, and that brings me to number three, which is responsive display ads. This one is, this one's not too big of a deal, um, but for a few people out there, those of you who are advertising on the display network, particularly those of you who still have flash ads, definitely pay attention to this one. Um, so Google is going to uh, revoke support for flash. Joy, we've been waiting for this forever. It, it's definitely nothing new. Um, flash is a pain, and it's going away. And I expect that other browsers will follow suit. But this is important for advertisers who are running Flash ads because it will prevent the ads from showing, which could really be a huge ding to your advertising campaigns. So remember the old GDN text ads? This is what you've been doing for a long time. You gave them a little bit of information, and then they ran with it and created uh, these mediocre ads, right? They took your text, they plugged it into an ad, you know, then they had their rich media text ads. And I remember, Embarrassingly enough, remember being excited when these came out because they thought they looked pretty good. Um, but nowadays, these are these are pretty embarrassing. So they just launched responsive ads, and they look totally different, way more sophisticated. They're still taking the text that you provide to them, but there's more information in the ads, better images, and they just really fit in, especially those native ads, fit in with the website that they're being shown on. So how do you get these responsive ads to show for your account? It's actually very, very simple. They're slowly rolling this out in AdWords. So quick caveat, if you're following along and you're in AdWords looking for some of these new features and you don't see them, rest assured that they are coming. Uh, almost everything was rolled out by, I guess it was, 8 a.m. Pacific time on Tuesday morning. But it was a really, really big change, and some things are still kind of lagging. So beware, you'll see it coming in the next few days. 
Um, I think this was the one that rolled out the slowest. These are the ones that were seen in uh, fewer accounts. But to get there, all you have to do is view your ads and then run down to responsive ads. You'll see this is going to look a little different than the old the old formatting that you could use. So <laughs> common theme here today, they're giving us more characters to express ourselves. Um, in the past, we did have this headline of 25 characters, but now you can also include an additional long headline of 90 characters. So if we go back to that example I was showing you, see where that comes into play? That's way, way more information than you could share right here. So you have your short headline, your long headline, your description text, which is, it used to be 70 characters, now it's up to 90 characters. You can include your business name. You have up to 25 characters to do that. And that will be used instead of just plugging in a final URL. So as you can see, they really just kind of boosted the amount of information you can share in these responsive ads. And then most importantly, and I'm really excited about this, you can finally pick your own image. Because in the past, they would pull a crappy image and show it. Now you can upload an image that really is reflective of your business, something that you want to be showing, that you're proud of and happy with. Um, so this is simple, guys. Like you're literally just plugging in a very small bit of information, and then Google will spit out these beautiful new ads for you. And you can see exactly what it's going to look like. So we took the time to kind of pull all of this in and give it a shot. And you can see this new ad looks tremendously better than the teeny tiny old ads. Not only do we have the image, we also have the logo. It just looks a lot more professional. It's going to resonate with people. And of course, it's not in Flash, which is really important if any of you guys are using Flash. All right, so definitely something to keep an eye out for if you're working with the display network. And then finally, I'm going to consider this on a bonus because it technically didn't come out on Tuesday morning. It was out a little bit earlier, but I don't think it's gotten enough credit. Because um, I think this is really exciting, and I know internally our managed services team is using this for a ton of their accounts. And um, I'm a big fan of extensions. Like I said before, they are easy because they don't require a lot of maintenance. And on top of that, they don't cost anything. It's like getting all these free additions to your ad that you don't have to pay for. Um, imagine if you were paying for a TV ad and they gave you an extra like 30 seconds for no money. That would be sick, right? You totally take advantage of that extra time. But it's the same thing with extensions. They're free and they offer you more space to give people more information. Um, so definitely take advantage of these. Let's look at these new price extensions. So what are price extensions? They're kind of exactly what they sound like they are. Um, Below your ad, you can see a small grid where you can showcase different products and the prices associated with them. And this really works across multiple industries. So you see it here for a luxury apartment or over here for a spa offering new skincare treatment. Um, and you have your offer, an optional description section, and then pricing information available. We already know from shopping ads that when your pricing information is available to people before they click, you're going to get more qualified searchers actually clicking on your ads because it weeds out people who don't want to pay that amount of money, right? If I look at this and I'm like, I cannot afford a $60 massage, I'm not clicking on the ad. I'm not wasting your clicks and your money or either of our time with me engaging with your site. You're weeding me out from the get-go, and you know that if I click on this ad, I'm already totally cool with the $60 pricing. It is already um, something that I've thought about. Same thing with this apartment one. You know, I certainly cannot afford a almost $4,000 a month studio, not wasting my time or your time with me clicking on this. So this is a really, really good way to weed out your bad apples before they click on your ad, protecting yourself from unwanted costs. So we've been using these in several accounts, both when they were in beta and now that they are officially out in the real world. And the performance has just been astounding. Um, so we know that 
ad click-through rates on a normal ad. If it's a good ad, they can be pretty decent. Um, but it's going to be way better and amplified if you have site links. No surprise there. Um, so we tested site links against price extensions to see which one was more powerful. And as you can see, guys, it made a really big difference. More people were interacting with our price extensions. This is huge. Um, and, and it's also really easy to implement. So all you need to do, if you're ready to use them, is head to the Add Extensions tab in AdWords. This is exactly where you're setting up all of the other extensions that hopefully you're already using today. The call extension, site link, uh, call out, the whole nine yards. And when you get there, you'll see a screen that looks like this. Really straightforward, right? First, you're going to choose the type of price extension that you're using. Um, so here's an example of the different segments you can select from. Then you'll choose your currency. And just a heads up, it's not available for everyone. Um, I imagine that Google will roll this out to include more currencies over time. Currently, this is only available in English. And so you'll see that the vast majority or all of the uh, currencies available right now are serving English-speaking countries. And then you can set your price qualifier. And this is completely optional, optional. But as you'll see, you can set no qualifier, or you could say from, you know, starting from $200 or up to. But these are just going to help you kind of make a clearer case in your extension. And then, and so we filled out the top part. Let's look at this bottom part down here because this is when things are a little trickier. These are the specs that you can use. Um, so first things first, you have to include up to three headers. You can't just compare two things. You can't share a price extension for just one product. It has to be three in that grid or more. The products and services can be listed in the header column. They need to be 25 characters or less. And then you can use the description column to differentiate yourself. Add a full description for the offer. And in some cases, you might go as far as to put something like spacious apartment for one. Or in others, you might use something a little bit more, um, you know, induce little FOMO, like limited time only, or sale information. Price, pretty straightforward, right? You're going to put the actual price and then the unit for it, if applicable. And then finally, the URL that you want to send people to should they click on your header when it appears, so that landing page. Once you've sent all this up, your price extensions should be ready to go. Just a little bit of fine print here. First off, these will only appear on tablet devices and mobile devices. Price extensions will not appear on desktop. I wish I had a good reason for why that's the case. I really have no idea, but that's something that Google has made very clear thus far, that they're only available on these two devices. And then even more importantly to recognize, price extensions will only show up if you appear in the top position. So if you're in position two or position three, you have no chance of your price extension appearing. So that's really, really important to recognize if this is something valuable to you. If it's critical for you that your price extension is showing on a regular basis, then you really need to be prioritizing for those particular keywords and getting in position number one. And another kind of thing you want to think about, this is for all extensions, right? You're more likely for your extension to show the better your ad rank is, you know, the higher are you, up on, you are on the SERP. But the difference with price extension is that it, it will only show for position one. So even if the guy in position one doesn't have it, and you're in position two, and you're like, oh, why isn't it showing? It, it, it has to be number one. Um, so, so just a heads up, if you're wondering why you're not seeing your price extension showing, it may have to do with this, you know, either the, the device or your positioning. All right. So that's really um, a rundown on all of the new changes that we have or that Google has teed up for us and that we um, are excited about in the next couple of months. I'm going to pass things over to Callie because she has a couple offers to share with you guys. Um, and I can give you more information on any of those. And then we'll also do a question and answer session. So I'll pass things over to Callie. 
Thanks, Erin. That was awesome. So much information, um, lots to go over. Um, and we have a ton of questions. So before we get to those, um, as Erin said, we have some special offers for all of you today. Um, the first is a free live demo of the WordStream Advisor. Um, so this is to see how you can manage your PPC in 20 minutes a week during that time. Like a consultant will show you how you can manage Google, Bing, and Facebook accounts all under one roof. So it's a pretty clear. Next, there's a free one-on-one -on -one AdWords assessment where a consultant will walk through your account, see where you're doing really well, and also point out the areas of opportunity that you have to increase uh, the impact that you are having with PPC. And then finally, if you're all set, then that is that. So let's get to some questions. Um, there are a lot of them, so we'll get to as many as possible. Oh, oh. I mean, a good thing to think about, too, is if we can't get to all the questions on here, this is a really good, like, this is going to continue to be a topic that we'll be thinking a lot about, talking a lot about, helping people prepare for. It's like totally uncharted waters that we need to navigate. Um, so talking to a consultant, understanding these things, could be a really good option for those of you who need more information. So I definitely encourage you to do that. Great. So first up, in order to keep data from our old ads, would you recommend pausing old standard ads and starting with um, three fresh ads, or should we edit existing standard ads with expanded text? That's such a that's such a great question. Um, so with the expanded text ads, you actually set them up in a totally different. Um, like you can choose for the time being to set up a standard ad or an expanded ad. I would recommend setting them up separately and ultimately pausing those old ads. Um, but again, don't pause all of your old ads and only run the extended the expanded text ads. Instead, you know, maybe you pause your underperforming old ads, leave the top old standard ad running, then run that against an ETA or two. And ultimately, once your ETAs really pick up and, and start proving to you that they're doing well, then you can pause those old ads officially. But your mindset is right where it should be. The idea of pausing things to retain data, pausing them um, rather than deleting or editing the best route to go. Great. So kind of a couple more questions off of that topic. Um, should we separate our new expanded ads into separate campaigns or separate ad groups? I, I would not recommend bothering to do that because you don't want to have anything competing with one another. The other thing is you're going to keep up. Hey guys, sorry about that. Looks like we lost audio for a second. Um, hopefully you can all hear us now. If you can't, please message us. Um, I just can't hear that. But anyway. Um, so what I was saying is um, I would just recommend adding extended text ads to your existing ad groups and running from there. Um, that's going to be the best way to avoid tough competition, the best way to focus on your quality scores, keep the existing ones intact, and really push to move forward and get them better. Awesome. So for companies with large accounts, how will they be able to cope with this. Do you have any advice for creating large quantities of text ads quickly? That is why we wanted to do this webinar immediately. Um, this is a huge, huge undertaking. And, I, and I, you know, I hate to say it. I know it's going to be tough for people. It is going to be hard. It's a lot of work. My best advice for those big accounts is start early. Don't hold off until the end of the year where you'll really be scrambling. And God forbid you're an agency scrambling and your clients won't be thrilled. Start now. Start with your, um, I would start with the most, the ad groups that are getting the most volume. Reason being, these are typically doing really well, so why not get, like, reap the most of these from the ad groups where you're seeing a lot of volume? Um, and even if you need to take it week by week, ad group by ad group, but start now because you're right, this is a huge, huge undertaking. Every single ad in your account will need to be rewritten. Not only that, but you really should be writing eventually two to three versions of these new ads so you can test them against one another. Um, so yeah, it's going to be a lot of work. Uh, maybe maybe Google will come out with a tool to make it easier. We haven't heard anything about that. We've asked multiple times. We don't know that they have anything on the radar 
You can mass upload them through Editor and AdWords for the time being, though, if you do build them in Excel. Great. If I'm planning a restructuring um, on my account sometime, you know, mid-October, should I still add standard text ads along with expanded or just go with expanded? Oh, that's a great question. Um, you're thinking of doing it in October? I probably... If you have all the free time in the world, just go for it. Uh, you know, test them against one another. I, I would probably just do expanded text ads. Reason being, it's going to set sunset pretty shortly after it. We do typically expect expanded text ads to have way better click-through rates. So I would just focus on A, your restructure, because that's important, and B, creating expanded text ads for the ad groups in that restructure. Is there a new character count limit for headlines? Yes, your headlines. So your original headline number one only gains five characters. Gives you a little breathing room. You're probably going to not write much different. But headline number two is new altogether. So you just gained a second 30 character headline that you can use. So ultimately your headline the total headline count gained is 35 characters, which is incredibly significant and should give you the opportunity to really share a lot more information with, uh, with the people searching for you. Okay, a couple more. Where can you adjust your bid based on device? My accounts still only show a place to edit mobile bid as a percentage. Okay, that, the situation you might be experiencing right now is the fact that Google is still slowly rolling this all out, so it may not have hit your account yet. Um, but you would want to do it in your campaign settings. If you're just seeing that, you're not seeing all of the adjustment opportunities now, like in that screenshot I showed, it likely means it just hasn't rolled out for you yet. So keep an eye on it in the next couple of days. We have a couple questions on price extensions. So are they being served on desktop? And then no. Okay. <laughs> that was the one. No, just just tablet and mobile for right now. Tablet and mobile position one. So really really limited uh, visibility there. You may not have experienced price extensions yet because they're only showing in, in those limited capacities. But man, when they show, they do really well. So why not set them up? I mean, it's certainly not going to hurt anything and it doesn't cost anything either. Okay, so do all the prices you list have to appear on the final URL page? You know, I can follow up with you on that. Um, I believe so. I believe it needs to be reflective. That's a big thing with Google. They feel really strongly that anything you're advertising needs to be corroborated on the landing page. And that's all about giving the user a good, positive experience. So my, I suspect that that's the case. I, I haven't read anything stating that explicitly. So I don't want to say definitely, but I'm like 99.9% sure, yes. Okay. So probably one or two more questions. How many total ads do you recommend per ad group, including DTA ads? Um, oh, okay, so like general rule of thumb, I always recommend two to three ads per ad group. Reason being, you always want to be testing. You should always be running A, B, or A, B, and C tests. Um, if you have more than two to three, it just gets to be a bit of a nightmare, and it's hard to keep track and understand who the winner is. So. Uh, in terms of how many of those should be standard versus how many of those should be ETA, I think it's really dependent on um, how much time you have on your hands. I think, in my mind, best case scenario, run one old standard ad, your best standard ad, just for safety sake, and then two ETAs, because ultimately you, you want to start testing ETAs and figuring out what the best practices are for your account with expanded text ads it may differ from what other people are seeing. So the best way to figure out what works for you is to run a couple of versions, start testing now, then when Google flips us all over, you'll at least know what's working and be able to iterate on that. Awesome. All right, one last question. Can you selectively choose which ads to include price extensions for and which do not? You can't, uh, you can't pick the ad itself, but you, I believe you can put them on the ad group level. Again, I'd have to check for you on that, um, whether it's ad group or campaign level, but that would, like, ultimately you would know 
what ads would be eligible for it um, based on the level that you're putting it on. Um, so like with all extensions, they're really, you know, it's all at Google's discretion whether they show or not, what they show along with, and the whole nine yards. Awesome. Thanks so much, Erin. Really appreciate yeah. all of your insight. Um, so that concludes today's webinar. I know we didn't get to a ton of questions, so as Erin said, like definitely reach out to her via Twitter or at the WordStream um, handle as well. We'll try to get to your uh, get your all of your questions in a timely manner. Um, and then just a reminder, you'll receive an email directly from Erin uh, later on this afternoon with the, the recording of today along with the slides. So if you see anything in there too that uh, makes you think of another question, don't be shy. Again, we are here to help and happy to do so. Um, and we hope to see you at a future WordStream webinar. Thanks for taking the time out of your busy day to join us. Thanks, guys. Uh, we'll try and publish some stuff on the blog soon, so more information to come.